Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about policy-based authorization and how we can implement it in our ASP.NET Core API. In previous video, I covered role-based authorization. So based on your project requirements, if you want to implement the role-based access control, you can go and watch the other video if you want to use the policy-based authorization. So let's do it together now. In this video, I'm going to cover both controller action and also the minimal API. We have one API here for getting the product. This is the minimal API. I just simply return one list of the product. And here for the controller action, same logic, but we have the authorize. Okay. So in this video, we assume that we have two group of the users. One is for web and one is for mobile users, right? So imagine that you have one API that many clients using your API to getting data. One is from browser and one is from mobile users, right? So we want to actually separate those kind of users and handle access for you using your API based on the policies, right? If I run the project here, just want to call the API because all these controllers wrap by authorized attribute and also this API has a required authorization. So simply if I call the API here, it should return 401, which is returned by the authentication part right what we have here we have add authentication and also add jwt bearer for using this extension method you need to install this nugget package for asp.net core authentication jwt bearer okay simply we only have the authorization and also here two middlewares okay let's implement our authorization so first of all i'm going to create a local access token for using the dotnet 7 feature so we can simply just say user jwt is create so it will create a valid jwt token which we can use for our local testing right it means if i just put this jwt in our authorization header i'm using bearer and it will say, okay, I need to run my project as well. So let's call the API again. As you can see, it, it's returning 200 means okay. It means our JWT is valid and authorization middleware because we didn't specify any roles or policy. It just passed the request and allows the request to go on. In this video, we are going to use the policy, but how we can implement it we can let jwt bearer like this but in authorization we can add some policies for adding policies to our pipeline of asp.net core we can here set our policies like this we can say options and then for options there is one method for adding add policy actually I already created a constant scalette that we can use. Here is our constant values, right? As I mentioned, we have two different group of users. One is from browser, one is from mobile. We are going to create two different policy for the web and mobile. First of all, we can say user group from web and this one is actually some kind of string values nothing more we have web mobile and also for handling claims as well right we just named our policy as a user group but what we are going to handle for browser for example we can say all of the requests that coming from the browser they need to for example require a claim like this it means all of access token, all of the JWT token that come into our pipeline, we have to have claims, which is here, I'm going to add web claim. Claim name is user group and the value should be web claim. What it means, it means all of JWT token needs to have this kind of claims. For example, our claim name is user group and they need to have the value for web something like that if you want to imagine how it will be and for policy we have more options actually so we can even say this policy require the claims as well it means all of those requests jwt needs to have the role claim as well apart from the user group okay i'm going to add another policy as well 
This policy is for a mobile. The user group is the same for name and also the mobile. But here, let's say policy should have a role as well. I'm going to say for mobile users only, this request or these users that you are calling our API needs to have, for example, the guest role, right? That's it for implementing our policies and handling policy based on incoming access token. I'm going to add policy here in authorization. So we can say at constants, this one, let's go for mobile. And for minimal API, I like to add web, uh, the browsers. So here we can say user group web. As you already know that this uh, names, the policies should be same what we set already because the pipeline will check this API needs the policy for the web. So let's see what is the requirement for this policy. And then it will check claims here, right? Let's run the API again. Now with this valid token, before we were getting 200 as okay. Now, if I call the API again, it's already running. Now I'm getting 403 as a forbidden right it means the authentication middleware passed but the authorization is saying that your access token is not valid for accessing to this api this forbidden means you are a valid user but you don't have enough permission to accessing the api what is the reason the reason is we are calling a minimal api right and this one is for web the required claim here is we need to have a claim called web but our access token if we check what we have inside the jwt token here now we can see it's only containing like what is the subject is user the audience says expiration but there is no user group claim okay I'm going to create another one using this command for generating JWT. Here simply we can say this access token should contain the web as a user group. So let's create it. And now if I check generated token again, you can see we have a new claim called user group, which the value is web, right? So let's just add this one and call the API. This should be okay, right? we are getting the 200 it means authorization is checking the token containing the user group web and then everything okay you can call and go for the request getting the response from the api and also for the controller action we are using the mobile so that if i use the same access token that i already use here let's just create authorization just think what it return it returns 200 401 or 403 just a second let's call it now it's return 403 which is correct our access token is correct we are a part of browser or web group but this specific api is only for the mobile application so that when you are calling the mobile which using the browser token it will through 403 right so anyway, we can here again create another token, put the mobile value here and it will work. Here, the main reason for this video, usually when you are using the policy base or role base, for the authorization part, your user is only authenticated by third party identity provider like uh, Google, like Facebook. But once the request came to your application, your API, you need to handle or add extra roles or extra claims to your current request. How we can implement this requirement? Actually, in previous video for the role base, I used this kind of trick here. What we want to do actually is on the fly at runtime when user come to our application we need to call the database and get all the user roles put it in http context and then everything work in previous video i use this events okay for the jwt bearer event you have multiple events for example 
I use on, uh, I think, let me just add, I use another event, untoken validated. This untoken validated means your authentication part is done and now you want to add extra claims to your identity. You can, for example, here call database, manipulate principal identity, and then everything works. Here, even you can get your services from, for example, dependency injection, like this one. Services, and then something like that, okay? In this video, I'm going to cover another interface, which is using by ASP.NET pipeline called Claim Transformer. Actually, this interface coming for the exact reason that we want to use it in this video. I already have class here, which is implementing this interface, I claims transformation, and currently is nothing. It's just an empty class. Also, we have a user service that is a mock one. Imagine that you are calling your database based on the incoming username. And then based on the username, you getting the claims from database and put it in the identity. This is the implementation, very simple, very straightforward. So let's just first add it to our dependency injection services. Add, we can add it as a scope or transient. I think transient is safer one. I want to add it, right? What we can do here, first of all, we have principal as a parameter. It means this interface, once ASP.NET pipeline want to execute it, the authentication part is already done. It means the current request is authenticated. So the principal has some values, for example, here, they have some claims in the JWT token payload, right? But we want to say, for example, user claims, current user has in our database. So we can say user service get user claims. Also, we can say this identity won't be null because it's already authenticated. Another one is we are adding identities. We can say we have multiple user claims. And then we want to add list of claims to our current principal. I would like to say something like identity, claim identity. We need to create a list of uh, claims for this one. So simply we can say create a list of claims for me based on our policies. The name is user claim. Here also we can use user group claim and the value is we can say x and then here is x for us okay we already created an identity based on the user claim and now we can say principal at identity and adding our custom identity that we already created based on the incoming user. What we did already, based on the incoming user, we get all the claims from database, create identity, and then put it in current principle. Let's run the project here. Now I'm going to use another JWT, the old one without any claims in it. If I use this one, and also I want to put a breakpoint here to see what happened. For the product, for controller action, this one is required mobile, right? So let's call the API. As you can see, the breakpoint is hit here because this claim transformation will be executed or will be called by the ASP.NET pipeline, right? Here, the principle, we have the claims. For example, here we have the name like Said or I don't know, the audiences, the issuer, .NET user JWTs, but there is no user group, right? So let's go on the user claims already. We add, we want to add web and mobile to user group. Let's just F5 and then 403. It's still returning 403. Let's see what we did here. As you can see, this one is returning 403. You think why? Why this one is returning 403? Let's see, let's check the product and what we set already. The controller action, and also let me just call this one as well for the minimal API. This is quite interesting to see. Again, we are going to add the web and mobile, F5. You can see this one is returning okay, 
right? But the controller action for mobile users is returning 403. Let's see. Here in authorize, the policy is user group mobile, but here we added the role. It means when authorization run for this request, it requires the access token to contain the role guest, right? So it's, again, this is claim transformation. We can simply add another identity at claims. We can say claims like role, the claim name, and also the value is guest. For this one, because we are using this policy requires the role guest. So we just simply add the role to the incoming request. I think it should work. Let's see. You can see when you are creating your authorization or authentication, this kind of conflicts or this kind of exceptions, you always need to know what you do or based on your configuration, okay? This one is for mobile. Let's call it again. Now it's again 403. What we have here, we are, maybe we can set claim types and say roles. Okay, and then this is the guest. We are setting the guest as well. Let's call the API again and let's see what we have. I want to fix this issue in this video because I didn't face it in the preparation actually. So let's fix it together. Why not? I'm going to add breakpoint here. Okay, so the claim is going to be this one and now we have three claims here role and then name okay so let's do it ah okay nice finally <laughs> we fixed this api what was the reason for the role here we can say that authorization is using some a standard claim type name which is you can see this claim types role is using this one so kind of this, you know, a schema for the authorization, the ASP.NET. So we added the role and the value is guest. And then the API now is passing, right? Nice. And also, as we saw for the minimal API, everything is okay. Because this web browser didn't need a role guest, right? That's it for policy-based authorization we successfully implemented a way that dynamically at runtime we can add claims or roles to the current request based on the incoming request so for example here if we want to create more you know accurate or following the best practices you can have something like if this request coming for mobile and then adding the the role guest something like that and also because we are query on our database, we can have claim name and also the claim values, right? So on the fly, you can just simply say, this is the claim name and this is the claim type. So no need to add the role or the user group claim. So you can dynamically uh, handle it in your database as well. This video is a little longer, so sorry for that, but it was, I think, good to see how we can actually debug or removing or fixing this kind of issues in the authorization or authentication. Let me know your thought about this policy base. If you are using different approaches for implementing the policy base authorization, uh, leave a comment for me so that I can see what you are doing, guys and then happy to uh, know this way is good or not. Thank you for your time again.